How is it going lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and I am back with another PlayStation Virtual Reality News update video. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about Firewall, we're going to be talking a little bit about Alvo and then just a smidge of PlayStation 5 in general news. So first things first, what I want to talk about is this image that you can see over here. I've pulled up on Twitter, this was put up by Ashley Huffman and Frank from First Contact Entertainment retweeted us. This is not actually new. Apparently this information has been around since 2020. Basically what this is, is a list of the top grossing virtual reality games as of September 2020. Now these are estimates, they're not locked in. So there's some guesswork involved, which, which just kind of happens all the time with these kind of things, especially when it comes to like hardware sales for you know, Xbox games because Microsoft never actually give out the hardware sales figures. So these kind of companies, this company in particular is Kagan, Kagan Estimates. So I guess they just go out there looking for data to research data, data. I can't remember which one it is I say. And they've come up with these figures, uh, basically from September at least. So it says in the small print includes games designed specifically only for virtual reality. So this does not include games where there's an additional virtual reality mode included. I assume that would include the likes of Hitman, Resident Evil 7. You know, these are just built from the ground up for virtual reality experiences and games. Also, these are lifetime worldwide sales figures. So it's not just one region like North America, like it usually is with these things. This is supposedly global. So let's take a look at the list. A lot of these titles you might notice on the right hand side, they like it shows the platforms. A good few of them are on multiple platforms. So PlayStation and Steam or PC or whatever. And so as expected, Beat Saber is sitting pretty at number one. I should mention the stats here. These bars represent the sales and they are given in millions of dollars. However, I don't see like a, like a number to like I, I can't match up the bar length with numbers so I don't know how many millions that is I'm just going based on the size of the bears so who knows what that value of that is in millions anyway Beat Saber number one not too surprising as I said already it is on multiple platforms PlayStation Steam you got Quest next up then you have Half-Life Alex which is like so shockingly close to Beat Saber considering it's just on the one platform and considering it's out what a year a little bit more than a year i can't remember the exact month it came out but uh half-life addict is very impressive but that's the power of having a huge ip like half-life i have no doubt that people have bought this game like big half-life fans have bought this game without even having a virtual reality headset and anticipation for when they do get a virtual reality headset next then we drop down and there's a good like there's a pretty decent drop off here between second and third place judging by the size of these bars super hot virtual reality that's been an evergreen title it's been on multiple platforms it is you know relatively cheap and it has been there pretty much you know the very early days of each platforms it's had super hot next up then behind that is like another pretty big drop off and then from then on the drop offs aren't as significant but this is a pretty big one as well and it's down to boneworks virtual reality which is that impressive kind of showcase of i guess physics and how that all works in virtual reality it looks like an excellent game something i'd love to see on psvr2 something i think we will see on psvr2 i think the developers have even kind of hinted at towards that after that job simulator not a surprising one that's one that's always in the top 10 when it comes to uh playstation virtual reality sales so it makes sense that it's up there after that then is pavlov virtual reality which is like pc viewers big shooter team-based online shooter pavlov after that blade and sorcery after that arizona sunshine and Another one that's been around for a long time it's on multiple platforms not too surprising behind that skyrim virtual reality big open world hundreds of hours all of that in virtual reality not one bit surprising that that made this is the 10 top 10 yeah top 10 so ninth place now what did surprise me in a good way is firewall zero hour down here in 10th position only available on one platform been out since 2018 so it's been out for, been out for nearly three years at this stage which is long pretty long but top 10 including all platforms and firewall zero hour has broken into that, so that that's impressive and why i find this to be exciting personally is for two different reasons i suppose okay so first contact entertainment must be happy i don't know for sure obviously 
Plus, I would assume they are happy with the performance of Firewall Zero Hour. You could argue that virtual reality in general has been underperforming beyond people's expectations for the past five years, or however long it's been. So in that sense, maybe every single game is underperforming when you have those expectations in mind. But with the way things have played out, with, you know, five million PS Viewer headsets, Firewall Zero Hour being in the top ten, surely they're happy with that. Sony teamed up with First Contact Entertainment, that's why you see Sony beside them as the publisher. This is the only Sony published game in this top 10. So surely, Sony are going to be taking note of that. So they're like, oh, First Contact Entertainment, these guys can make us money with this quality game. Why I think that's very exciting is that, you know, it's increasing the chances of a Firewall Zero Hour 2 as far as I'm concerned. So what better way, you know, to kick off PSVR 2 then with a sequel to, obviously, one of the hottest virtual reality titles in the world, as it turns out. And keep in mind, in the small text there, it's saying this does not include expansion packs or add-ons or DLCs or stuff like that. So I can only assume that's not including any of the, you know, season passes updates. This is all about revenue, top gross in viewer games. So not necessarily units sold, but how much money these games have made. So based on just unit sales, it seems that Firewall has broken the top 10 worldwide very exciting stuff for firewall fans for ps viewer fans you know there's an awful lot of games out there that firewall is performing better than based on this list now i am just basing everything off this image i've been trying to track down like an article to go along with us i can't seem to find us by doing like a reverse google image search i just see us leading me to different tweets and stuff so i'm assuming it is legitimate if mr frank himself is retweeting us and uh all i can say is well you know happy with that. Next topic I want to talk about, we're going to stay on the Twitters, because this is kind of breaking news, I suppose. We've got some Alvo news. They've been kind of quiet for a while, but in the last week or so, they started to make some rumblings, including just one hour ago, where they tweeted a sneak peek at an upcoming map. We'll take a look here at these very brightly lit interior. And I must say, it looks quite nice from these images. I like the brightness. I always like the bright maps in Firewall as well, containment, stuff like that. I don't know what it is about bright colors. Anyway, it's good to see that new content is on the way. If we scroll back a little bit, there's been, you know, an update from a zombie mode that we've been expecting to come to Algo for a while. Uh, we know it's probably a little bit off from releasing, yes. Uh, but here's a sneak peek, and they retweeted this from PS Viewer Underground, who posted it up. And as AJ pointed out himself, is that there are objectives and that there's a cache as well, so that there's kind of, you know, there's more going on here than meets than just zombie killing. You know, locate and capture the objective, and you've got a time limit for that, and then there's like a currency system going on there. So you'd imagine maybe they're, they're going for something like Call of Duty Zombies, where there might be waves. So you see here in the top right corner, round one, that could be wave one. Um, and then in between rounds or whatever, you're purchasing weapons or ammunition and you're unlocking more stuff as you progress etc etc so everyone who's thirsting for some albo content it looks like you're gonna get that thirst slacked a little bit hopefully not too far away this tweet here does say huge updates also coming this week so a big update's coming this week although it's not gonna be the maps or the zombie mode but there is an update coming so keep your eyes peeled for that one. And finally, this is just some kind of general, nothing to do with viewer specifically. If you've got a PS5, you can note that there is a big software update that is currently in beta. But this one is pretty important though. One of the biggest problems with the PS5 is that it just doesn't have any expandable storage, yes, other than external hard drives, but you can't play PS5 games off those, you need a certain very specific type of SSD that has to be a certain speed to match what the PS5 can do and then you can upgrade your storage with that. And that is what this beta is going to bring in, it's bringing support for these M2 SSDs. Since this news came out, there have been two manufacturers who've come out and said, okay, these will work in the PS5. Of course, it's going to cost you. These are pretty expensive upgrades to the storage, I would say. So this is from The Verge. Sony's PlayStation 5 system software basic program is starting to roll out today, and it includes access to the long-awaited M2 SSD slots. That means a variety of Gen 4 drives will be supported, including Samsung and Western Digital. So those are the two big ones 
maybe there's more the way they're talking it sounds like there's more but yeah samsung 980 pro and western digitals sn 850s this is some complex shit just make sure you get the right one if you're going to get one of these aside from m2 ssd support the latest ps5 basis software also includes okay so before i go back onto that the new stuff i will just stress before if you're thinking about buying any of these um ssd drives to expand your storage just make 100 percent sure you've got the exact right one that will work the way you want it to work so even if you have the money for this and you want it straight away i would recommend just waiting a month or two make let's other people test that shit out make sure it works before you dish out 400 dollar dues on two terabytes aside from m2 ssd support the latest ps5 base of software also includes 3d audio support for built-in tv speakers so currently ps5 supports 3d audio but only if you're wearing certain headphones I, mean, I will say most headphones seem to be able to do it but there are some headphones that won't work but anyway games like returnal 3d audio is almost like essential in that game so that you know where all the threats are coming from and you're facing the right direction and uh, they can really enhance the game with this option or this updates sony are going to somehow attempt to achieve that same effect just through the tv speakers I can't imagine it's going to be half as effective as just using the headphones, but we'll see. And the feature uses the DualSense controller to measure the acoustics of the room to apply a 3D audio set. So I think what they mean is you can do a little like calibration. So it uses the microphone in the DualSense controller to detect what the acoustics are in the room. And then based on whatever feedback it gets, it'll adjust the setting accordingly. Sony is also improving other areas of the PS5 software. The control center interface will now include more personalization options for rearranging or choosing controls, and PS5 users will be able to view and write messages to friends and parties from the game base in the control center, so some nice quality of life improvements there. The friends tab in game base is also being updated with better management options and the ability to see how many friends are online. Sony is also addressing some of the confusing aspects of PS4 or PS5 versions of games. Different versions Versions will now appear separately in the home screen and game library and each game's title will also now include whether it's ps4 or ps5 so that's going to get rid of some of that confusion this new ps5 beta will also include a trophy tracker that lets players quickly access up to five trophies per game through the control center so another couple of things that this article doesn't mention that i've seen elsewhere online is that trophies are now going to be listed vertically instead of the stupid horizontal thing they've done so I'm delighted that's going to be gotten rid of. I believe they're also going to be making some changes to the create button function, including, you know, different lengths of times that you can save videos. You can remove the little icon in the corner of the screen that shows when you start a screenshot. But anyway, good news overall. Hopefully the price of those SSDs will go down as they, you know, compete against each other. There's already two of them available, which is good. So if it was just going to be one available, they'd have a little bit of a monopoly on the Americas, at least for the immediate future, but straight away out the gaze, it looks like there's gonna be two of them battling with each other, so that's gonna encourage them to drive the prices down as low as they can. So yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching me waffling on and on, and on and on and on. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment. Before I end the video, let me thank my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as I speak. Thanks to their generosity, they're keeping this channel nice and moist. In particular, let me give a shout out to the following top tier Patreon supporters, Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid, Crumb, Pete Hawkins, and Tradition. Thank you very much for that generosity, lads. This is very much appreciated. If you'd like to help out in the Patreon too, the link to that will be in the description. If not, the likes, the comments, the share, subscribe, whatever, all a big help. Finally, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my videos. You can check him out, Decepticon.com, link in the description. And with that, I will finally end this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now. Please stay nice and moist. Petrified.